David Zervos, if you take out the housing connected names from those reports, Zillow and Airbnb, and look at some of the consumer going on, I'll highlight uh, DoorDash because I was looking closely at that. A little bit better than expected uh, guidance into Q4. How much is that notable and does it fit into what we heard from the Fed at all? Well, we are coming off a pretty incredible Q3 from the consumers, so I think a lot of these companies saw strength. They saw strength that was probably unexpected as well and presumably are going to keep going with that forecast until they see otherwise. And that seems to be, I think, the, the general rule here. We've had weakness in manufacturing. You saw that data today. But really, all the intermediate data that came out for the Fed, I, I thought was remarkably strong. Uh, whether whether it was the GDP data or the payroll data or or anything retail sales, we saw some some big numbers, and uh, a lot of it focused in on the consumer. So it doesn't surprise me that much. It also doesn't surprise me that we keep getting these earnings surprises, if you will, to the upside because we still have a decent amount of inflation in the system at four percent. Nominal growth is strong. Earnings are a nominal variable, hmm. as we pointed out for for many quarters now right. with our clients. So I, I think it's I think it's it's not that surprising. And, and by the way, some of the housing data, as, as you, you want to kind of push it as weak, and there are some weak spots, I mean, it's pretty remarkable, honestly, how well some of the housing data has done, given where we sit in mortgage rates. It's, uh, it's held up pretty darn well, especially on the, on the overall price levels. Mm. Uh, the activity's low, but the, uh, the levels are high. Barbara, I know you were watching uh, DoorDash and Qualcomm, among others. Qualcomm did better than the flat numbers that many expected and uh, and DoorDash also outperformed. What does it mean to you? Yeah, you know, no, I'm, I'm actually surprised on Qualcomm because that's really their main business is smartphones. And so it'll be interesting when they get on the call to see what they're seeing. You know, the inventory must be down a lot. You know, we're waiting for replacement cycles to kick in. A lot of a lot of uh, purchases were made during COVID. So, you know, I think that's sort of stock specific, um, not so much tied into a broader demand story. DoorDash as well, that is a more, it's both a macro story and stock specific story in that it's consumer discretionary spending. You know, people have been for some years ordering more at home, having things delivered. And of course, during the pandemic, that really stepped up. But since the the, uh, the economy has been open for a while now, they continue to do well. They're gaining share against Uber Eats and Grubhub. So I think you're seeing a lot of good things there, and they're reaching scale, and that can um, help costs. But it looks like the consumer is still spending and still ordering out. You're not seeing the pinch. So I think, you know, people are trying to guess when the consumer runs out of money. And some people are saying by end of this year, which is just a couple of months away. But it still looks like with jobs, wages, we still have excess savings, not so much in the lower income, but we still have excess savings, you know, be, that are higher than, than the uh, pandemic. And so there's still money to be spent and people still have income. And there's still a lot of people with low debt. They really took advantage of the low interest rates, particularly with mortgages several years ago. So I don't see the consumer spending falling off a cliff. Clearly, it's slowing. You've seen that with credit card delinquencies, as mentioned earlier. But that still is just in line with where it was in 2019 and not remotely near where it was in the 2008 crisis.